In this video, we'll talk about how to simplify algebraic fractions, but also talk about some of the pitfalls and things to avoid. First, we'll start out with a fraction just with numbers, just to make sure we understand some of the fundamental principles. If I were to tell you that I wanted to simplify this fraction, and that what I wanted to do was to say that since there's a zero on the top and a zero on the bottom, that I should simply cross out those zeros because they're the same, and so therefore somehow I can cross them out, you would of course think I was crazy. Because instead what we want to do to simplify this fraction is we want to divide top and bottom by some common factor. Now you might notice that the top and the bottom of this fraction are both even, and so what I could do is take my 120 over 104 and divide top and bottom by 2. Just like I can multiply the top and bottom of a fraction by the same number, I can divide the top and bottom of a fraction by the same number. When I do that, 120 divided by 2 is 60, and 104 divided by 2 is 52. Top and bottom are still even, so we can divide by 2 again. Now this might not be the most efficient way to do it, but it certainly works. You might see that I could have just divided top and bottom by 4, or actually even by 8, as we'll see. 60 divided by 2 is 30. 52 divided by 2 is 26. We divide by 2 again. And we get 15 over 13. And we've simplified our fraction. So again, the key idea here is that when we simplify a fraction, what we don't want to do is simply just start crossing things out that look the same. What we want to do is divide top and bottom by the same number. And that principle applies even if we have an algebraic fraction. After all, variables represent numbers. So if we see the same expression on the top or bottom of our fraction, we can't just cross them out because they look the same. Instead, what we have to do is divide top and bottom by the same number. So here's a wrong approach. So this is the wrong way to do this problem. We can multiply out the top and get x squared plus 4x divided by x squared. And then we could say, hey, there's an x squared on the top. There's an x squared on the bottom. Let's cross them out. And then maybe we're not exactly sure what happens. Maybe they just disappear. Maybe we just get 4x. Or maybe there's a, a 1 that happens. But that's simply not right. We don't want to just cross things out. Instead, what we want to do is divide top and bottom by the same number, by a common factor, so that when we divide top and bottom by that factor, the problem will get simpler. So what would be a common factor that we would divide by? Well, we can see that when we multiplied it out, we got x squared plus 4x. And even though we've got an x squared on the top and an x squared on the bottom, we don't have a factor of x squared on the top. But what we do have is a factor of x on the top. So what we can do is divide top and bottom by x. And let's see what happens. So just like in the previous problem when we were dividing top and bottom by 2, in this one we're going to divide top and bottom by x. Now on the top of our fraction, here we're multiplying by x, x times x plus 4. And then we multiplied by x, and now we're dividing by x. But when you multiply and then divide by the same number, you get back what you started with which on the top of our fraction is just x plus 4. Think of it this way. If I were going to take a number and multiply it by 12 and then divide it by 12, I would get back the number that I started with. So I'm taking this x plus 4, multiplying it by x, now I'm dividing it by x, so I just get x plus 4. And on the bottom, I have x squared, which is x times x, divided by x, so one of those x's goes away, and I just get x. And again, you might be tempted to say, hey, I've got an x on the top, I've got an x on the bottom, can I just cross those out? And you want to try to stop thinking about simplifying fractions as simply crossing things out. Instead, what we're doing is dividing top and bottom by the same number. So if we wanted to get rid of this x on the top and this other x on the bottom, we have to think to ourselves, can I divide the top and bottom by x, and will something nice happen? The problem is, if I try to divide this 4 by x, 4 doesn't have a factor of x in it, and so if I try to divide the top by x, I'm not going to get something nice to happen. And so in fact, this fraction is fully simplified. Let's do one more. So again, we see a lot of x squared. Here's an x squared on the top, another x squared, another x squared. And again, you might be tempted to just start crossing things out. And instead, what I want to try to encourage you to do is think about dividing rather than crossing out. But since we've got all those x squareds, we think it might be a good idea to divide top and bottom by x squared. So what happens on the top of my fraction? Well, I have x squared divided by x squared, 
and so that of course is just going to be 1. What about on the bottom? Well I have x squared divided by x squared, which is again going to be 1, plus, now when I have x squared times x minus 3 divided by x squared. This is sort of similar to what we saw in the previous problem. I'm multiplying by x squared, and now I'm dividing by x squared. So the x squareds go away, and I just get x minus 3. Now I can simplify this just a little bit more, because I've got 1 plus negative 3 is going to be negative 2, and so when all is said and done, I get 1 divided by x minus 2.